the pause on making student loan payments is over. Let's bring in Craig Bolanos to get some common sense. Craig is the CEO and founder of WMG. Craig, what will this mean for millions of students and for the economy? As a result of the debt ceiling compromise that was passed on a bipartisan basis on June 2nd, courtesy of Congress, the student loan repayments after three years, after nine extensions, they're going to begin 60 days from June 30th. So everyone who was hoping we might see a 10th extension to continue to have forbearance, well, all hope has now officially been lost. What should people do now if they need to resume making those payments that could potentially make this a little less painful? Angela, as you and I have been talking, this is nothing short of an avalanche issue in American financial planning. As people, for all intents and purposes, have had their federal student loans, well, they've been out of sight and out of mind for more than three years. So here's my short list of actionable ideas for everybody right now. Number one, locate your student loan service provider. There is a chance that people you might have moved in the last three years. Your loan provider is gonna need to be able to find you. Just because you moved and you don't have a payment plan on file doesn't mean you don't owe the money. You don't wanna go into default. And on top of that, the servicing of student loans, it changes over time. So the loan provider you had prior to the pandemic might not be the loan provider you still have. Number two, contact your loan provider. Once you've identified who they are, they know where to find you, you know who they are, you gotta find out exactly what your terms and conditions are. What is your balance? When are your payments exactly gonna start? How much are those payments going to be? How long are those payments going to last? What's the interest rate? You need to own your information so you can make good financial planning decisions. Number three, revisit your repayment plans. Some people are on a standard 10-year amortization schedule. Other people prior to forbearance had entered into income-driven repayment plans, what I call IDRs. You're going to need to have a command of what those options are so you can make an excellent choice for yourself and your finances. But above all else, it is time for more than 44 million Americans to get on a budget because when we're on a budget, we start telling our money where to go instead of wondering where it went. And most student loans have an obligation, a monthly remittance of some 300 to 500 a month. That's just an average number. It might not be your number, but that's a lot of money. And I really want to make sure people start incorporating, not next month, not next week, but tomorrow, where they're going to have the funds to make these payments. And Angela, since you and I always talk about investments, I think you know people need to pay attention to this because we're about to have 44 million people that are going to have less disposable income. That's less money every month for M&E, meals and entertainment, less month for T&L, travel and leisure. That's going to have ripple effects, not just through the economy, but it's going to lead to what I call investment effects as well. And people should be taking an active look in their portfolio to be thinking about how those impacts are going to wash through. I'm Craig Bolanos, the CEO and founder of Wealth Management Group. We're here to help people get retired and stay retired. And if you want to learn more, you most certainly can. Go out to our website, investwithwmg.com. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV. 